Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're looking at power factors. Now to me power factors are a better way at looking at comparison between engines than just say horsepower per tonne. Um, horsepower per tonne um, which you see for a lot of cars and stuff like that makes sense for cars because they're generally a tonne, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more, um, but they float around the tonne level. With motorbikes, it's a bit different because we're well under a ton. You know what I mean? There are hardly any machines out there that are actually half a ton. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about power factors. I'm going to talk about what they are, and then show you some examples of um, the difference between uh, some machines, uh, ranging from little three fifties or one two fives and stuff like that, all the way up to thousands and blah blah blah. And then there's a thing about power factors that I want to talk about, um, which is quite important. Any road, let's just get on with it and stop yapping on. What's a power factor? So you take, um, I don't know, that's just massive numbers, 200 horsepower, you then divide that by the weight. So if we say it's a 200 kilo bike, now power factors work, the numbers will be slightly different because of the conversions, but horsepower is an imperial um, measurement and, you know, kilograms are metric. So. For this, it doesn't really matter. You can switch them around as long as you compare like for like. So if you measure a uh, bike in horsepower and pounds, you have to make sure that every time that you compare that machine to another, that you do the same conversion in horsepower and pounds. The units really aren't that uh, the, the units aren't that important as long as they're like for like, like I said. So um, what you do is you divide one by the other, and if you do this, it's one for one. So you get a power factor of one, just one zero, that's it. It's a small number, and that's the beauty about power factors instead of using horsepower per tonne, is that they're really generally quite small numbers. Horsepower per tonne are, but then you have to start calculating. If you're doing horsepower per tonne, you'd have to start doing this, and it's, yeah, I just like nice single digit numbers. They're easier to compare to each other. Any road. So, if you have a... Um, a machine that has a power factor of literally one, then that is shit hot. That is a horsepower per kilogram. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on the board, um, I'm going to draw a little graph and just show you where some of the engines, are, some of the motorcycles, where they sit on the actual graph. Right then, so here's our um, power factor uh, graph, and I'll put a link in the description so you can actually have a look at the proper graph that I plotted out. And on this side we have power factors, on this side we have CC. So as you can see, that they're all scattered everywhere, and obviously CC goes up this way, and you can, this is the average line basically, when I plotted it on Excel it gave me an average line. So you can see that there's this hump to it. Now you might think this is because there are a lot more bikes than 1000 CC, but on my actual, um, uh, on the actual graph that I did in Excel, uh, there's a lot more of all the others, I just couldn't really be bothered to fit it all on here. But basically this is what you get, and as you can see there's this hump in the middle where the 1000cc guys sit, and they all have a power factor of about 0 0.8, and you've got CBR, uh, CBR1000, uh, R1, GSXR, kind of all the um, superbikes. So the superbikes live up here, and obviously them going up here right, raises this curve, but it is quite interesting that these have such a high power factor compared to the other ones. Hayabusa and a um, ZX1400, they sit here, not as high as these do. And it's because the 1400 bikes, although they have more power than they do, they weigh a hell of a lot more than they do. You know, a ZX14 with shitloads. And so they have a power factor of about 0.7. Um, so one of the first things you're going to do, and like I say, is take your horsepower and then divide it by your weight. That'll give you your number. So you might be tapping away doing that now on your calculator on your phone or something like that. And as you can see that all these um, bikes lie, um, you know, on this graph where they do. But what's quite interesting is you've got a Bandit 650 here and then you've got a Bandit 1200 here. And although the CC has increased, the power factor really hasn't increased really that much. I think there's a slight difference. I think it's like 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16,
of a power a point zero two of a power factor. It's literally bugger all. Um, and what we're going to talk about is why the thousand cc's are here and why there's this hump. Yes, there's a hump because of the data, but why are these bikes getting such high power factors compared to high booters and ZX um, 1400s and stuff? Still powerful bikes, uh, more, you know, more power than these, but why are they so low? Well, yes, because of the weight, but how come, you know, what's going on? Why is this such a thing like this? So the reason why, one of the reasons why you might think is because, well, the, the, the R1s and all the rest of it, they have the World Superbike, they have the British Superbike, they have the MotoGP, you know, they have um, them, they're in 1000cc classes, those sports, and the um, manufacturers spend a lot of time focusing on that, you know, on that CC. So obviously a lot of the technology that they develop in um, the MotoGP and stuff like that ends up in these bikes. This is true to a... Um, true to a degree, but then it, it begs the question again, why then is MotoGP and why are superbikes a thousand cc? And when you go to bigger ccs, your power factor actually drops. And you might think, yes, but this, these go a lot faster, but these have the highest acceleration, and to be quite honest, aren't that much slower than these bikes, the 1400s and the 1300s and so on. So you know, what is the difference? Well, the main reason is you. You know, a human is a certain size. You know, if you were the size of a cat, then a 100cc motorcycle would be absolutely crazy. You know, or a 250. You'd never have to go up. This would be too heavy. Um, so because of air resistance and the mass of humans and the size that we are, you know, it's like aircraft. You can only make fighter aircraft so small because of the size of a man. You've got to have a man and a jet seat. He's got to have controls. That makes you so big, which makes the rest of the aircraft so big to propel something that size that fast and have that much manoeuvrability. The same thing applies to motorcycles. Um, a thousand cc, if you've got any bigger than that, then you are just adding mass to produce more power. Now it's dragging its own mass. So the sweet spot, you know, people say, well, a thousand, it's a lovely number and all the rest of it. Sounds like it's a marketing gimmick. Well, most of these are 998 and 997 and stuff like that. Uh, the number really isn't that important. What's important is, is that due to trial and error and what have you, they found that through all these power factors that 1000 cc gives you the best power to weight ratio or the best power factor. Um, simply because we are the size we are. You know, humans have an average weight, have an average size. You know, I'm six foot two, which is on the edge of just normal. You know, there's guys out there at five foot ten, which is again on the lower end of um, the average, the norm, if you want to call it that. So, a thousand cc, them engines just seem to be the correct size for our mass, for our weight, and basically that's just the way it goes. So, I will talk more about power factors, and they'll come up in a lot more videos because they are a good comparison of one thing to another. But until then, I'll see you in a bit.